Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys figure preview video. Before we begin, I have to say a massive thank you to Ryan Kirkwood for going out with me in person in Hong Kong to ACGHK, Hong Kong's version of Comic Con, and snapping some badass high res pics. Show Ryan some love in the comments below because without him this series and this video in fact wouldn't be possible. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new figure preview video goes live on the channel. Or should I say advanced figure preview video? Because technically these two aren't up for pre-order but I sure as shit hope they will be because Kane and John Wick from John Wick Chapter 4, they're straight up must-haves in my opinion. The John Wick films have gone from strength to strength, with John Wick 4 I reckon being the best of the franchise so far. I hope they continue with the story, we'll have to wait and see. We will be looking at both Kane and John Wick in this video by the way. Kane comes with his doorbell slash motion sensor because in the film he plays a badass blind dude. Not the same badass blind dude that he played in Rogue One. What is it about Donnie Yen wanting to play badass blind dudes in western films? We had Chirrut, now we have Kane. Not complaining because he kicked some serious ass even though he was a blind dude. Having those little motion sensors it was very very clever. He does come with the dueling pistol from the end of the film. You also get his Kane, his namesake so that makes sense, as well as multiple pistols and his hatchet. I personally am fine with this array of accessories, the pistols, the cane, the hatchet, the hands with decent levels of skin texture and the wedding rings and the doorbells. That's enough for me. I don't think he interacted with anything long enough to warrant including it with this figure, anything else at least. If I miss something, just let me know down in the comments below if there's one killer accessory that's just slipping my mind, I am so sorry. Now the display base I think is simple but classy, it says Kane around the front, John Wick Chapter 4 in that very bright orange stands out up on top, but having it so prominent it just kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit at the same time because Hot Toys what the hell, you didn't make John Wick Chapter 1 figures, you didn't make John Wick Chapter 3 figures, just 2 and 4, maybe they're not a fan of odd numbers, even numbers only for Hot Toys. Look. Having John Wick from the start of the series and also Halle Berry from the third film, that would have been a really good way to flesh out the line. I loathe when Hot Toys give us incomplete lines. Like in this situation, it's going to look really weird having just two and four. People might walk into the collection and say, hey friend, what happened to John Wick 1 and John Wick 3? Did you not like those films? To which we'd say, yeah, I love them, but they didn't make figures from them for some reason. Just a really weird choice. You do get the blade that goes inside the cane and I would imagine it would be removable. The edge is nicely detailed so it looks like a sword. Before you ask me, no, unfortunately it did not look like it was die cast. It looked plastic in person and it definitely looks plastic in these pictures. You can just tell it has that grey look to it rather than being that super shiny die cast chrome material they usually use for metal swords. So plastic I reckon is the way they went for Kane's cane sword. I do dig the bullet hole up on the top of the display base and the translucent blue edge which is a different colour to John Wick's which you will see in just a second. His shoes look great and brand new for Kane. The suit has some very sharp creases down the front, the tailoring is also sharp. The material lays well and it looks like a navy blue suit. It's not super saturated so it's not going to stand out too much, it will blend well with John Wick in his black suit. At the same time having a little bit of colour is never a bad thing. And it works with the white turtleneck sweater. It does come down and extend past his sleeves for the suit jacket which is proper suiting. It should extend down a little bit further than the suit jacket. It ends at the correct length. And the best part about that white sweater is when you bring it down over his wrist pegs they're completely hidden. He looks entirely seamless from head to toe. You don't have any split cut boot designs, you don't have any crazy joints anywhere. Even the neck looks like a fixed neck design. There's no seam underneath his chin. This, if you photograph it well, if you light it correctly, it'll look very very realistic. So you can see that that turtleneck does come up and cover up that neck connector. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of padding on the torso just to fill him out because 
Without it, he might have come across too skinny, but the traps are well-defined. The jacket with that padding in the shoulder pads also helps. But the lapels do seem to fly away, and the stitching is very, very prominent on those lapels. They've got time to iron these things out. I'm so sorry. You can literally iron it flat. I'll move on. The sleeves also look a little bit wrinkled and crinkled. Maybe they were adjusting the posing, or maybe they were using this prototype just before the show to take some pictures for the promo pics for the pre-order. That's what I'm hoping. Fingers crossed it doesn't take too long for us to get Kane because I need him. You can also see the wedding ring display prominently on his left hand. All of the interchangeable left hands do have that same wedding ring, so you're not going to miss out depending on which hand you choose. And it's permanently sculpted and painted there. You don't have to worry about sliding it on and off. It's permanently affixed. It's part of the hands. Which is definitely my preferred way of doing it. I would much rather not have to faff around with a teeny tiny ring, especially in 1-6 scale. Now his business suit, as simple as it is, it is tailored well except for those flyaway lapels. Fingers crossed they fix that by either stitching them down to the suit itself or magnets always works for lapels. Going with the dark navy blue with the white jumper, that super stark contrast, I think works well for Kane. Not to mention it is accurate to the movie. So even though it's just a simple business suit, I still reckon he's going to stand out in the collection. Let's be honest though, as good as the tailoring is, as much as I love the accessories, which I do, the head sculpt, it does all of the heavy lifting, and I'm pleased to report that it's a very strong likeness to Donnie Yen. Is it their best Donnie Yen head sculpt? No, I don't think it is. I still reckon that goes to Chirrut. That, to date, is my favourite Donnie Yen head sculpt by Hot Toys. But coming in second, granted there are only two of them, still not that bad. This... Yeah, it looks like him. I like the skin texture, the furrowed brow with the wrinkles up on top, the volume to the hair. He looked like that in the film. You can even make out some super fine sculpting for the individual strands of hair. Now the glasses are removable, they're separate pieces. You can see that there is some depth, they're not permanently sculpted to the head sculpt, especially how they go over the ears. But I am curious to see what his eyes look like in 1-6 scale. You can't really see through them, and I tried my best to move around the display and try and peek around them to get some shots of the eyes with the camera. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I'm sorry. A lot of people were asking me, Justin, what do his eyes look like? And I just can't tell you. We will have to wait and see. The lenses are translucent enough that you can see that there are eyes behind there and the rest of the head sculpt is there too. I'm just not quite sure what it's going to look like when you take the glasses off. Will that help or hinder the Donnie Yen likeness? That's what I'm curious to see. Right now, yeah, I love the head sculpt. Like I said, it comes in second best to Chirrut, which is not a bad place to be. That Chirrut head sculpt, it was outstanding. Hey, just my opinion though, if you prefer this to Chirrut, that's fine. As long as you have seen enough pictures in this video to make up your own mind on this head sculpt and hopefully decide whether or not you want to pre-order this if Hot Toys actually make Kane, that's all that matters. That's the purpose of these preview videos, not for me to assert my opinion as the only one. We all have our own opinions, whether we agree or not, it doesn't really matter as long as we're happy. This head sculpt, I think, is a win. And I am hoping, like I said, if Hot Toys make this, Please make this Hot Toys, we need John Wick and Kane from John Wick Chapter 4. Overall, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this figure. Is it 100% perfect? No, it's close, and with a couple of tweaks and adjustments, I reckon it could get there. The posing potential alone, not just for Kane, but for John Wick as well, having these two fighting each other, doing some Ip Man Wing Chun style poses with Kane beating John Wick's ass, or vice versa, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. John Wick himself, he comes with a wide array of accessories, we'll discuss that in just a second. And his suit is quite dramatically different from Kane's, not just in colour, but in texture. You'll see, from a distance, you can't really tell, but up close, yes, it's a three-piece suit, so that's a big difference. But the weave that they've chosen to go with for the fabric is very, very interesting. They've corrected the hands. When they first put up the teaser pic, which they promptly took down because Hot Toys made a bit of a boo-boo, they forgot to have John Wick's finger cut off, but as you can see as plain as day, on his left hand, the proper, the ring finger has been removed. I'm really curious to see if there's a stump under there. You can't tell because of the angle, 
but I'm hoping that they've detailed that, and it looks a little bit nasty. He does come with three stacks of coins, as well as three loose coins. The stacks are fully sculpted together. The nunchucks look great. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a real metal chain on there. And they do look like wood, although with Hot Toys sculpting being as good as it is, that's probably going to be plastic, just with some wood grain textures sculpted into the surface and a couple of paint washes on there, maybe some print details to give that wood grain look. Yeah, they could have fooled me from a distance. That looks like wood, and you have some washes in the design work on the top of the nunchucks. You do get a rifle. Not 100% sure if this is an M4 or something else. It looks like a little bit of a short-barreled rifle, so probably not an M4. I'm not the biggest gun aficionado out there, so if you know what kind of rifle this is, please let me know down in the comments below. But we didn't get this with the John Wick Chapter 2 version. He came with a bunch of different weapons. Oh, and the katana that he got from his friend, the manager of the Continental in Japan. It doesn't look like metal, it looks like it's plastic as well. He also comes with a dueling pistol, just like Kane, once again from the end of the movie. And I'm very interested to see if this can open up and you can insert a round in there, because these were single fire pistols meant for dueling, so they only could carry one round. With those hands, again, we can't quite see underneath. It's morbid curiosity, I guess. Is there detail? Is there not? Either way, I want to find out. His display base is different to Kane's in the fact that it's red versus the blue. So having the red and blue together, oh... That is a winning colour combo, and doing the translucent edge so the light passes through it with that red on top for the symbol, and adding the bullet holes with the burning embers and the smoke effects and the neon John Wick logo. Yeah, I really like this display base. The shoes, they might just be some of the nicest Hot Toys business shoes that we've seen in a while. Not just because of the shape of them, which is good, but because of all of the surface detail. There's a leather grain texture. There's a bunch of wrinkling, so John Wick does not care about creasing the toes of his shoes quite clearly. He cares about kicking ass. And underneath his pants, you can't quite see it in this picture, he does have some socks on. Just like the previous Hot Toys John Wick, he's got socks on, so even in crazy dynamic kicking poses with his pants riding up, you're not going to see the bare, ugly, nasty base body. You will see socks. That's a win. The pants... You are starting to see a little bit of that texture, which you will see in more detail when we move up the body, but it's there. And he also has some very defined creases down the front of his suit. There you are, like I said, you can see there is a lot of texture. It's like this diamond pattern, and I'm not quite sure if that's that bulletproof layer. I'm pretty sure that's on the inside of the suit, actually. So, either way, it's just a very, very interesting looking material that they've used for the suit. His shirt cuff comes down over the top of his hand, covering up the wrist peg. I'm glad that it's long enough to do that. Hot Toys and other 1-6 scale suit makers, don't be afraid of making your sleeves for your business shirts slightly longer, so that you can pull them down and cover up the wrist pegs. Especially for characters like John Wick who get dynamic, to say the least, in their posing for some gun foo. You're going to want to have that be able to come down, cover up the wrist pegs, no problem. So yeah, make them a little bit longer, who cares? You can always tuck them up if you so choose. I'm just now noticing that that almost screen printed like diamond pattern on the suit jacket that's slightly glossy when the light hits it, subtle, but I like it, is also present on his vest and his tie, so everything is matching. He's gone with a full Windsor knot for the tie, the tailoring is super sharp, some very defined shoulder pads. I'm also not noticing any press studs on the vest, so it sits very flush down by his body. Now this Keanu Reeves head sculpt, I reckon is their best attempt yet. This is the closest they've gotten to nailing Keanu's likeness. The expression, you can see a lot of wrinkling in the forehead. There's also some straggly bits of hair around the front. And when we get to the side of the head sculpt, we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. The skin texture is great, his mouth is slightly open, he looks full of determination. And I can see a subtle gap around his eye. This picture right here, you can see it at the bottom of his eye. So I'm thinking that this might be a movable eye head sculpt. And if it is, oh, that's going to make me very happy. Now up the top, partway through the hair, you can see that there is a noticeable seam line. Normally that would bother me, but I think that this front hair piece is swappable. So that you can go from an action one like this with the straggly bits of hair going everywhere. By the way, a nice touch, it looks like rooted hair almost from a distance with the individual strands sticking out, to something a little bit more neutral, subdued almost, just with his hair hanging down the side of his face. 
We've seen third party companies do swappable hair pieces for their John Wick head sculpts. So why not from Hot Toys? They definitely have the resources to make that happen. And I think that would be a big step up over the other John Wick head sculpts on the market. If you get moving eyes, this incredible likeness, I mean, to me, that shot right there looks just like Keanu. And the swappable hair piece. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have the same issue you had the first time round. I don't know how many people still have their John Wick Chapter 2 figure, but I'm willing to place a bet that those people who do still have it, they're no longer rocking the Hot Toys head sculpt because it wasn't fantastic. This one is. This is a massive step up over the John Wick Chapter 2 version. I reckon that was actually their weakest Keanu Reeves head sculpt. Then we had Neo from Matrix 1. I really like that one, but still not perfect. Then the closest they got before this one was the cyberpunk Johnny Silverhand. That one I still think looks exactly like Keanu from certain angles, from others, yeah, maybe not so much. This one, it's a lot stronger. You are starting to see a little bit of that shadowing, the gap around the eyes, depending on how you light it. If you light it from above, with the brow casting that shadow over them, they do look a little bit more inset, but... I'm perfectly fine with how the head sculpt looks, and I can't wait to get both of these if they make these happen. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. If you are heading down to the comments section, please tell Hot Toys this needs to happen. They need to see a little bit of hype and excitement around these two figures, otherwise... I don't reckon they're going to make them, and that would be a darn shame. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.